In this video, I'm going to show you how we are operating in a Ponzi financial system, which will eventually implode. So let's get right into this and start discussing it. So what am I talking about? Let's get into the big banks and talk about the loans and their assets. Okay, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce has 522 billion dollars in loans. Toronto Dominion Bank has 862 billion dollars in loans. Bank of Nova Scotia has 768 billion dollars in loans. Royal Bank of Canada has 827 billion dollars in loans. The Bank of Montreal has 549 billion dollars in loans. National Bank has 204 billion dollars in loans okay so when you total up the total amount of loans just between the six banks the number you arrive at is 3.73 trillion dollars that is a number that surpasses the entire money supply in Canada so what you essentially have to understand is there is not enough money presently to pay back all of these loans like if everybody tried to repay these loans all at once there's not even enough money in the system to pay these loans back and that's what you have to understand this is a ponzi financial system that we are operating in so if we look at the m2 money supply we can see right now m2 money supply is 2.4 trillion and you can see how it exploded in 2020 the growth in m2 money supply was over 25 percent an insane amount of growth in just a short period of time because central banks used that crisis they seized that crisis as klaus schwab says to essentially inflate bubble even further and continue on their mission which is ultimately to just continue inflating until eventually they can't inflate anymore and they meet their ending and their ending point may be this inflation that we are currently facing right now so with these banks we've talked about how many loans they have it's an insane amount more than can be paid back but let's talk about how much assets they have because surely they're going to have as much assets assets as they have loans aren't they so let's take a look so canadian imperial bank of commerce has 204 billion dollars in assets toronto dominion bank has 517 billion dollars in assets bank of nova scotia has 390 billion dollars in assets royal bank has 815 billion dollars in assets bank of nova scotia has 310 billion dollars in assets and national bank has a measly 92 billion dollars in assets and you have to think about what are their assets and how much of that is fake as well because it is a valid question to ask and a lot of it is fake and when you actually boil it down to the numbers and you compare their assets to the amount of loans that they have they have 60 percent let me tell you that again 60 percent more loans than they actually have assets and then m2 money supply when you look at the entire money supply of canada and you see it on this chart realize this they have 55 percent more loans than currently we have money i mean isn't that just an insane thing to realize because even if right now you think this isn't the end and this is going to continue onwards for a long period of time the inflation of these bubbles and you think that that will continue you have to realize that eventually that is going to meet an ending point when they can't inflate any longer whether it's civil unrest or political turmoil that ends that or inflation or any of those they create this toxic cocktail where essentially central banks they can't do what they necessarily want want to do which is inflate but right now they are pushing the economy to a place 
where they can continue to inflate. That is their game right now. Their game is to push the economy into a recession, to push the economy over the cliff so that they can inflate the bubble even more and inflate things even more because you have to realize that the system that we operate in is a Ponzi financial system. But the thing that has caught them off guard is the inflation that we have right now. And what happens with inflation is going to determine the course of this entire bubble. And you have to think about this. It's bigger than the GDP of Canada. We're only talking about six banks in this video. Just think about all the credit extension that goes on in the economy beyond the banks. Think about General Motors and all these other companies that have financial services arms that are also lending out money and how many hundreds of billions of dollars is loaned out on that market. And you realize that the amount of loans that this debt-based system has is just unbelievable. We can't comprehend it. And compared to the amount of money that is available that could pay back these loans, it's nowhere near. They are far from each other and they're never going to get close to each other. The problem is that to get close to each other, you have to have one collapse. So you either have the money supply collapse or you have their loans collapse and the central banks won't allow that to happen. And it seems like right now, some central banks, the Bank of England, the Bank of Canada, are prepared to sacrifice the currency in order to prop up the banks, the financial institutions, the lending, the inflation of the bubbles. And it will just destroy everybody in the end. The thing which I see right now in England, which I find absolutely crazy, is the inflation that is in England is, is unbelievable. It's well over 30, 40% in the past year. Yet housing prices were up a measly five or six percent and people think that their house is worth more money but what they don't understand is they just lost a huge amount of purchasing power and if they sold that house a year before they would have been able to buy 35 40 percent more than they can buy a year later even with that five percent increase and this is the dilemma that you're going to see happen in these countries like Canada like the UK like many places in Europe you're a essentially going to see inflation and the debasement of the currencies happen at such a rapid rate that it outpaces the value of these assets climbing. It's going to create a toxic recipe for people's wealth and financial future. It's going to create civil unrest. Crime will continue to rise. The wealth gap is going to continue to get further and further away. And it's going to create massive massive problems. This is really important for people to understand, I think. Fundamentally, when you look at even you take one of these banks at random and you look at the amount of loans they have, nearly a trillion dollars on the balance sheet of one bank and the Royal Bank, they actually have a fairly decent amount of assets, so they claim. But again, what are those assets and how are they valuing them? Are they valuing them accurately? Because the chances are they're probably not. And we know this from the past because this has happened before in 2008. It happened in Canada. It happened in the US. Both countries had to have massive bailout programs as a percentage of GDP. They were exactly the same. It's just Canada's was more of a stealth bailout. So we know that these banks are liars and it's almost crazy criminal what they're doing because you've probably seen in the news that they're increasing their loan loss provisions. For what? When you look at their loan loss provisions, it's almost criminal. They're increasing it a measly $50 million, which sounds like a lot. Sounds like a lot when you float it out there in a news article, doesn't it? But when you look at the amount of loans they have, $827 billion, you're talking a fraction a fraction of that. And they might have 5, 10, 15 billion to cover that. If even 1 or 2% has to be written off or they start defaulting, the bank is in major, major trouble because they don't have the sufficient capital allocated to deal with these potential losses. And this is what happened in 2008. They didn't see it coming. But we know it's coming. We just saw a bank collapse in the US, the 18th largest financial institution, and it will not be the last. Mark my words. 
good, there's going to be more banks going bust. And the only way, the only thing that backs up this is the money printer, as we've discussed in prior videos. And if you would like to find out more about FDIC or CDIC, then I suggest you check out that video right there where I was covering about CDIC, which is essentially the same thing as FDIC and how it's just backed up by a money printer. Thank you so much for watching. You also might like that video there that the YouTube algorithm recommends. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.